Hello. I am back with a minimalistic collage process video. Not really a tutorial. You're just going to watch me do it. I usually start in my journal with some mark making. That can be with pen, pencil. This is a paint marker, fluorescent. It's one of my favorites. Looking at some of my paper stashes that I put together that are on my desk. These are really great because I just do a variety of different things and staple them together and then I can travel with them or whatever. I did find this piece of mail. It was from like a life insurance company and it was for my husband, but I really loved the, it was printed on a vellum and it was like a certificate. So I really like that. So I'm going to start with that. Not really having a plan, but I generally like to start with see-through just to create some interest without obliterating the background completely to, because I just don't know yet, you know? I don't plan this out. I usually try to veer toward a color theme but that's not planned. But at this point, I'm definitely looking for some words or numbers. What would add some texture, both tactilely and visually. So I'm even rooting around in my little junk basket, seeing what I can find. Doing a bunch of additions, not additions, auditions. There are times that I will just pick one, glue it down, pick another, glue it down, and not really stop and look at it, but I'm definitely being a little more tentative <laughs> this time, so... I'm feeling at this moment that that is going to be one of the visual elements. Kind of that larger letters draws your eye is what I'm thinking. And at some point in this process, in all processes that I experience in my art, I just get done. And... I realize I cannot keep fussing and looking for, you know, whatever the perfect piece is or whatever. I need to just execute. And so that's what these minimalist collages actually help me with is not overthinking. Um, it's actually one of my biggest challenges is to not overthink and just to practice and just glue things down and not worry about whatever it is I'm worried about, whether it's wasting paper, time, it's some sort of idea of waste. I don't know. So that was a piece of raffia ribbon that I just unrolled, I guess. And it reveals that it's kind of see-through, which I, again, I love it. So just decided to glue that thing down. And so now I have like four different layers there that create visual interest and um, textural interest, right? So I'm not sure what to do here. I grab some stamps. I have a huge, huge plastic bag of stamps from Canada. <laughs> you can usually find stamps pretty cheaply on Etsy, uh, on any, I guess Etsy is where I found those ones art markets um, so I'm not loving that OBER element I wanted some writing some script but I needed it to mute it down a little bit and so that is what that piece is going to do and I feel like it draws in the color of that other kind of um, 
ochre color over there to the right as well. So it creates a little bit more cohesiveness. Now I've got the pencil out and just doing a little bit more mark making. I'm feeling like it's just kind of sitting on the page. And so I think that's what I'm thinking about in terms of adding some more marks, maybe adding some shading. Those dots create, um, I don't know what you call it. It draws the pieces together a little bit more. If you can draw over the pieces that you glued down, uh, it makes it not so much floating in space, I guess. And that's kind of what shading can do too drawing all of those separate pieces together a little bit more. And then I have a Faber-Castell big pit pen, just creating some more of that idea of shading, connecting all of those separate pieces into one. That's a china marker. It's like a big crayon. Gives nice dark, dark lines that won't smudge either, which is really nice. And here I'm just checking to see, I want some more color. And so I chose a purple Posca. Those are acrylic paint pens. And I'm, I think I'm hitting kind of a wall here of, of creativity and I'm just trying to figure out what little last marks I can make and the purple with the green and the fluorescent seem to make sense in my mind um, and be something really pretty something a little bit different not staying with those browns and greens so much but doing a bit of a color contrast so there it is I'm gonna give it a little frame and then I'm gonna give it a little name and, and then I sign it too. So I hope that this was interesting. And what I usually do is I look for things that, I don't know, in terms of the name, naming the piece, I just kind of look around and I try to figure out what's written down near and what, what makes sense for the piece. So there you go.